Hello, Hi. I'm Christabel. And I'm Amanda. Welcome to another episode of Messy. Messy and We Mean It, the mommy podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, hope you guys have been loving it so far. This topic for today is something highly requested. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was sharing on social media and asking you guys, like, what do you want us to talk about? And the topic of friendship came up a lot. Yeah. Toxic friendships, actually. Yeah. So it's like, how do you navigate that? And if we have any stories, oh, dude, I have so many. Okay. So, okay, I am a people pleaser. I did not realize this until I was that out when, when I got to my 30s and I looked back, I'm like, wow. Can I ask what made you realize that you were a people pleaser? I would, for every single thing, just cared more about what the other party wanted. Okay. And it's not that I didn't want to, like, let's say, eat at that restaurant or do that thing. But it will make me really happy if we just decided to do like, you know, go for an outing together to the place that you wanted to go and eat at. Okay. Or like, you know, um, go for a concert that you just wanted to watch. Maybe I wanted to be on standing, but you wanted to sit down. And I'm like, yeah, okay. But at the end of the day, I would be very happy to people please because it made me happy, if that makes sense. Right. So it didn't make me unhappy, but I just focused a lot about making whoever I was with happy. And this translated to my friendships, my relationships, you know, and it made me stay in a lot of these relationships for a very, very long time. Mm. Um, Did it make me feel good? Probably not. That's why, like, you know, I drifted away from friends and relationships ended. But I would say that being a people pleaser would make me stay in such toxic situations for... Longer than you should. Yeah. And yeah. it will often end up with me feeling really down, really shit about myself. Mm-hmm. And me questioning like, hey, am I whatever they say that I am or was? Um, am I really that terrible a friend? Yeah. And then you start believing these kind of, you know? you know, you start believing what they say. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then it just spirals, you know, you don't feel like you're in a good place. But you keep reminding yourself that, hey, actually this person loves me. So maybe what they are saying is true. Mm. So it really took me being really close to like my best friends and all and to really unpack all these to understand that certain relationships are just not for me. Mm. And it's also because I wasn't doing the right things and staying in all these relationships. Though they told me, hey, you know, maybe this one is a red flag. Why are you still like close to her? Or like, why are you in this relationship? Mm. You know, your best friends know immediately. Yeah. Yeah. But most of the time, you try to just explain Give people to them. The, the benefit of the doubt. Yes. I see you doing that a lot with yes. people. Yeah. Like, every time they say, oh, I don't have a good vibe from this girl. How many times have I have you told me that? And I, and, and I will reply you with like a, no lah, I think it's okay. Mm. Um, I think my best friends also always do that. Mm. And sometimes even your parents, you know. Mm. Like parents will be like, oh, um, who's this? Mm. You know, so there are a lot of like signs all around. Mm. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is just me. I mean, toxic friendships, I think everyone has had a toxic friendship. For mm-hmm. me, um, I, I have had toxic friendships, but nothing really stuck. Nothing that really left a huge mark on me mm-hmm. like that. I felt like Amanda, um, she has a very high barrier to entry. I would say that. <laughs> like, for example, she's super open, she's super friendly, but to get into... Like, I would say not the deeper ends, but more of like to get to know To Amanda. like unpeel the yes. layers. You know, it takes a while. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I think that our friendship, uh, we are very privileged to have that. But it really took like years. Yeah. A long time. Yeah. Whereas Belle, um, she's pretty much an open book. Like what you see is what you get, right? And I think in a lot of situations, some people see that as, you know, like something easy to... I don't want to say the word prey on, but almost like that, you know? I would say that I, it's very easy to get close to me, especially if you're nice, you know, mm. you seem to be nice. Mm. Um, if we have like a meal together and I feel that you're really genuine, I would just like pour my heart and soul out to you. You know, I have countless friends telling me, you know, you cannot, cannot like just tell everyone everything, mm. you know, you need to make sure that you only share how you really truly feel with the people closest to you. Mm. But I'm the kind of person that if you ask me how I was and if I'm not feeling great, I'll be like, yeah, I'm not great. Mm. You mm. know, and this is these are the reasons why. And I'll end up oversharing. Yeah. 
And sometimes if it's with the wrong people... Yeah, that's dangerous. Dude, they'll take the information, tell it to someone else, yeah. maybe change a little or bit. Or use it against you. You know? Yeah, use this, all this information against you. And and it's just not nice. Yeah. But, I mean, my, my way of protecting myself is that, hey, whatever I share, I'm okay if people share it. It's not nice. It doesn't make me feel good. But it is my truth, mm-hmm. you know? And... I think it's always good to tell the truth. I think it's really interesting that you said that um, my barrier to entry is quite high. I mm-hmm. always thought that I was quite a friendly person. Mm-hmm. But you are. You are. But I would say that it's harder to get to know Amanda, Amanda, like like the way that most of your close friends know. Mm-mm. You know, like things like your trauma, you know, what you're going through at the moment. Mm. You know, you're really nice, very friendly, very open. Mm. But to really like be there as a close friend to you and mm. in that proximity... Is it takes time. It takes time. Mm. And I think that really, I was quite, I, I'm also quite an oversharer actually. Mm. But um, that was like, it took me a, 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 a while to realize that not everything has to be said. Mm. Um, and the biggest turning point for me was actually when I moved to Singapore. Mm. Uh, I think I've shared a bit uh, about this with you. My defenses really, really mo- uh, came up when I moved to Singapore. You know, um, I was so new there and I really, really didn't know anyone. And w- I was thrusted into an industry that is more cruel than kind, you know. So mm. I saw a lot of red flags and I felt very unsafe. I didn't know who to trust. Mm. So my defenses in Singapore really, really, really came up. And then on top of that, pandemic uh, piled onto it and then my mental health just really crumbled um, but I think right now where I stand when it comes to like drawing my boundaries, I'm in a more, I'm in a much better place. I know how to navigate better and my life has a lot more balance now. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, when it comes to like oversharing, I find I, I can catch myself going like, yo, like this person doesn't really need to know that. I'm not withholding information from this person, but also at the same time, it's also not necessary. Yeah. Yeah. But I would say like circling back to toxic friendships, Mm. what was the first ever toxic friend that you had that you can remember? This was like in school, right? I think we all have had Mm -hmm. like that, that, that friend in school that, I don't know, there was one point in my life I went to an all girls, all girls school and there's a lot of politics in all girls schools. Mm. Um, And I didn't like that I was, in a group of friends and we would be like, you know, when you're younger, there's like all these like cliques. So I, I don't, I, I wouldn't even know how to describe us, but we were like the girls that would hang out on the side. And then like, I didn't like that my group of friends would stir drama. Mm. But at that time, I did not know it was drama and then I would join in it. Oh wow! But in hindsight now, I, I don't think that was good. Yeah. How about you? For me, I I just really wanted people to like me. Mm. I wanted people to know that, hey, I'm nice, you know. Uh, I'm Belle and this is what I like. This is how I'm like. And it would actually be really nice for me to be your friend mm. and be close to you. Mm. So this really translated to just being okay with however my friends at that point treated me. Like, for example, it's so stupid. Okay, let me tell you the story. So, uh, me and my group of friends were heading out for, like, uh, in the evening to have dinner. But before dinner, I wanted... When was this? Like, college? Okay, High I school? was about 20, oh, 21. Okay. okay. Um, and we wanted to go out and have dinner. So, we all hopped into a car, then we drove off. Then, I think on the way there, we I was like, hey, I want to eat ice cream first. You know, and it was along the way. So... Um, our friend who was driving was like, yeah, sure. Wow. My girlfriend went on and on and on about how I was a terrible person for wanting to eat desserts before dinner. Nobody else does that. It is just wrong and like, and just horrid. Like you are such a horrible person to want to just eat desserts before dinner. I know it just sounds so stupid. Why is your friend policing you and telling you what you can or cannot do? I mean, at the back of my mind, I knew that it was just like, I mean, my parents also eat ice cream before dinner. What's wrong with that, right? Yeah. But she was just going on and on about like how this was not right. Mm. And this group of friends. Oh my God, it's a group of them. Yeah, but like they're just, it's just like 
individual like situations one by one. So moving on, maybe a couple of months later, um, they sat me down and they always talk about like how it's important to be better people, mm-hmm. right? So they care a lot about me. They tell me how I can be a better person and how I could be a better person is to stop being fake and fake in a way that you cannot always be happy. It is wrong for you to always act like you are happy. A normal person will be able to show rage, you know, sadness, everything in equal amounts. And to really like just show that, you know, so if you're angry, if I say that I'm really upset, I need to show that I'm really upset. I can't be like, I'm upset, but still smiling, you know. But on hindsight now, I know that I'm just, I'm just this sort of person, you know. If I am really feeling really down, Somehow I just find the silver lining. I'll find a way to smile. Yeah. You know. And I, everyone I not, deals with their yeah. grief or their frustration differently. differently. Yeah. But I remember being that young and just thinking, these people care about me. They really want me to be a better person. Maybe I am really fake. And oh no, I don't want to be like that. So so what, what am I like supposed to do? Mm. And I think I just did not understand because I did not feel the kind of anger and the kind of sadness that they wanted me to portray. Mm. So I was just in this mess. I was like, I was my brain was just in this huge mess thinking, okay, so how am I supposed to act? You know, am I supposed to like just not smile? Is is that going to be better? No, I, I was just so confused. It's so strange because it sounds like they want you to be a certain way. Yeah. And they were not happy that you weren't a certain way. Yeah, because, okay, in the, in the past when I was younger, I was really like hyper. I was like, yeah! you know I, I'm really so, she like still that is now. like that I'm still like that yeah. now you know all, everybody's nodding behind the camera <laughs> but imagine that but way more mm-hmm. you know when I was mm-hmm. younger mm-hmm. it was just like that I was just running around I could sing at the top of my mm-hmm. lungs you know mm-hmm. to nobody and that was just me um, and how did you get over that like did you confront them about it no I didn't I just took whatever they had to say as the truth and the next day, we'd just go back to just normal, you know? Like, well, Are you still friends with them? Oh, of course not. No. Yeah. No, no, no. So these people are no longer in my life. Um, but I would say that the way I retreated from relationships like that is just really just disappearing. So I wouldn't say that this is the best way to end a friendship. But I don't know. Is that even a good way to end a friendship? Because for relationships, you have a breakup. Maybe you will unpack everything, have closure, right? But with friends though... It's so hard to find closure yeah. because you guys just eventually drift away yeah. or you just totally stop talking. Yeah. You know, and it's just left there hanging. Yeah. I, I've had a lot of friendships like that mm. um, where we just drift away and we just stop talking. Mm. It hurts. It yeah. definitely hurts, but I'm quite okay letting it go because if it's not meant for me, it's not meant for me. Does it ever make you feel bad? Um. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, but. Mm. I don't know. I when I decide to cut 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 it off, um, I can walk away quite mm-hmm. easily and not not look back. But it it takes me a lot to get to that point. Mm-hmm. But once I've decided, I I will walk away. Yeah, I think for me, I deal with a lot of like internal struggle because mm-hmm. I will be super self critical, thinking like, what did I do wrong? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe I could keep this and like fix it. You know, mm-hmm. but what I did was pull away. Mm. But maybe I kept, I, I, I just struggle so much with thinking maybe if I did something sooner or if I mentioned something sooner, things would be better and different. Mm. But on hindsight and also where I am now, I have learned and am learning to be more firm like yeah. you. Yeah. You know, if I'm decided that this friendship is not serving me anymore, yeah. I would just be firm on it and I will not second guess myself anymore. The one thing I've learned is like, you, the people treat you the way you allow them to treat you, mm. right? So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, this whole boundaries thing, it's a, it's a learning journey. It's a process. Mm. No one is born and is like, yeah, I'm really great with boundaries, right? Mm. Um, but much like you, you know, I've had friends that have overstepped that line or like drained me in ways that I did not understand at the time, mm. you know? Um, but coming out of it, honestly, at the end of the day, I realized a lot of it is, what they're doing is really just a reflection of themselves. Mm. You know, it's maybe it's their insecurities that they are projecting. It's a lot of projection there. And 
the one thing that I've learned to keep myself sane is that most of the time it is not. It has nothing to do with me. It's not mm. really a me problem. It is more a, a them problem. Mm. Yeah. For me, I do a lot of self-reflection and I'll think what I could have done to make things better. Yeah. But then I will circle back to my childhood friends. So our childhood friends are a rare breed. But if you have them in your life, like your best friends and things mm. like that, they are the kind of friends that are non, not transactional. Mm. They are the kind of friendships that you want to see reflected in your love, your love life. Mm. People who love you no matter what. People who will be there for you. People who you know will stand up for you. Yeah. Who want only the best yeah. for you. And who are not high maintenance at all. Yeah. You know, you can go for months on end without talking. But when you click together, it's just like, you know, no time has passed. Yeah. And there are friends like that. Yeah. But what I've realized now in my 30s is that even if you have friends like that, you need to make sure that you give them so much time. As much mm. time as you can to always remind them that, hey, you're thinking of them. Mm. Because th that kind of love that you have with them also needs to be like watered, nurtured. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of people also take our best friends for granted. And one thing I've learned after going through so many like toxic friendships is to hold the ones that have been my pillars so dear and to always like, you know, be good to them. Yeah, I think the one thing that you and I have in common is mm -hmm. that we have our childhood friends. Like yeah. we have people that go way, way, way back with us. Like mm -hmm. for me, I have this friend who I call my womb friend. Oh. Because we literally met in the womb. Like Seriously? my mom is best friends with his mom. Yeah. And my dad is best friends with his late dad. You know, they went to boarding school together when they were 13 kind of vibe. So even now we still keep in contact, you know, very, very close friends. But mm -hmm. like you said, very low maintenance. Yes. You know, we can go months without seeing each other. But then when mm. we do see each other, you know, it's it's full of love and like care. Mm. And, you know, mm. it's just very nice to be around. So I guess that's why, because I've always had that solid group of friends mm -hmm. from, you know, way back when or even school or even like my early working days, my first job. Mm -hmm. I, I've always been contented um, with my friendships. I never felt the need to like add on to it. Like mm -hmm. if it did happen naturally, that's a bonus. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I've, I'm quite, you know, I've a really good friend, a, a really group, good group of people around me. Yeah. And that's my measuring stick. Yeah. You know? Mm. Yeah. And then when you kind of meet new people, you're just like, okay, this is mm. interesting. It looks different. It's nice that you learned all this when you were younger because for me, it took me till my late 20s to figure all this out. Um, maybe it started when I was 26. Mm. So when I had lesser time, when I first started working and I think being young, you know, you are more free. You have more time to meet more people. And me being so open, I was like, yay, more friends, you know? But as I was reaching my late 20s, I reached a point where I realized I didn't have enough, enough time anymore. I wanted to give more time to family and my best friends. Mm. And work was piling up. Mm. I had to be really careful with who I spend my time with. Mm. And my priorities just shifted. And slowly, that was when I started learning how to properly decide who I wanted in my life. Mm. And up till today, it was such a steep learning curve because I love people. Mm. I love being around people. I am an introverted extrovert, but I'm super extroverted with people that I'm comfortable with. Friendships are an investment. Relationships yes. are an investment at the mm. end of the day, right? The more you water it, the more you give it sunlight, you know, it will flourish. Mm -hmm. And that's how I view my friendships as well. But I would say... Also, the right people that you water. Yeah, of you course. Know? Of if course. You, give, you don't water everything. Yeah. Yeah. But if like it's all plants that you water, all plants, not all plants will grow well. Mm. Yeah. Maybe that plant is not suited for you. You mm -hmm. know, it's not. You must yeah. change the house, maybe. Anyway. That's quite a drastic step. <laughs> Just change the plant. <laughs> 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 I would say that in my late 20s, that was when I started like really just narrowing down my friendship circle. Mm. But there isn't a nice way to narrow down other than just up and go, you know, like, okay, bye. There wasn't even a bye. It was just like a, 
like fade into the curtain and the background kind of vibe. Mm. And that part makes me feel really bad because I felt like I disappeared. But I also didn't want to explain myself, if I made sense. Yeah, you don't have to. You know, and, and they say that you don't have to, but you sometimes yeah. will think like, oh, maybe I should have done this. I should have done that. I don't know. Let, let me know what you guys think. How do you end a friendship? Do people end a friendship? Is there a nice way to end a friendship? I mean, obviously, you do wish them all the best. You know, they are working through whatever they are working through. You would want to see them do well, feel well, be happy. But like what they say, you know, there's this quote. I, it's I, okay that now you love them from afar. I, I don't, I think that sometimes I, okay, right now I think you're overthinking it. Oh no. I think that honestly, if it ends, it ends. <gasps> like why torture yourself more? I mean, it hurts. Yeah. It does hurt. If that person is willing to give you the space to talk about it, yeah, but one thing I've also grown to learn is that sometimes we cannot get closure. We cannot expect closure. Yeah. Like if you give yourself that closure, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. That's good enough for me. Like I've, I've accepted that, you know, I really tried my best and this is a friendship that I really wanted to work on, but it's really mm -hmm. not working and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. For me, I had a really, really, I had really, really good role models for friendships mm -hmm. because my father... Um, has friends from like way back when, like when he went to boarding school in the UK when he was 13, mm. you know, and he is still friends with them until today, mm. which is really, really cute. So I literally grew up with these people, yeah. you know, they will be a group of adults and I'll be like the only kid there and they'll be like smoking and drinking and like doing their adult talk, right? But I mean, still keeping it appropriate for like little me, but I felt very included in that, you know, it was very nice to to not be treated like a child, you know? Um, so even until today, you know, all their kids are grown up. They meet for dinners every weekend. They go and try different restaurants. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that has always been like, wow, I want friendships. Like, I want my friendship like this. I want to be 50 years old, 60 years old, sitting with you, you know, like... At, <laughs> looking for chagi or something I know we're really into chagi now right <laughs> yeah like buying a cup of chagi you know maybe like I don't want to say in a wheelchair but you know no, we're older la, no no <laughs> okay fine with like a, a cool walking cane you know yeah I mean that I don't know why my lower back aches and it's so tight yeah which we were talking about yesterday oh my god like the way you sit affects your back now yes. right yeah we we're just laughing about how it's so funny now in our 30s you're like, wow, your back just doesn't work like it used to before. Yeah. But, but okay. I mean, that's how I've always en en envisioned my friendships, you know. Mm. Um, Christmas, they will get together. Chinese New Year. I mean, every weekend they get together. Don't talk mm. about the, the big occasions. Yeah. And it, it's very nice. This is actually the good part of your relationship with your parents. Yeah. Don't yeah. you realize? Yeah, absolutely. Like, this is more the friendship side, but like yeah. it, it, it is also part of that family feeling. You yes, know? yes, yeah, yes. And yeah. you picked up the habit, and you looked out for all these signs that you wanted in friends. Yeah, yeah. I would say that I got my inspiration actually later part of my life when I met really good friends, and I've seen so many friendships that are functional and well, and like even my relationship with Amanda and her group of friends. You know, mm. to see how what kind of friendships I wanted in my life and to only focus on that and the quality that I wanted to have. And mm. I would say that it's just a whole learning process of taking charge and being confident and just wanting to build your life the way that you want it to be. Yeah. yeah. And, and trusting yourself, you know, yeah. like we talk a lot about our gut feeling and, mm. and what you feel here. Mm. Your body really is telling you something. You yes. really are telling yourself something. So you really should trust that. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, don't go against your instinct, especially when it comes to people because most of the time, you are right. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're talking about toxic friendships, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's always that blur line between like work and friends when you start like working with friends. Have you ever had a toxic friendship that was work-related but you had to like deal with it or put up with it because it's work-related? I would say that, hmm, let me think. I think the funny thing is that my work friends are also my friends' friend, like friend friends. Yeah, that's true. Because I'm, we're doing like social media, right? Um, I have this question a lot. Like even recently, last week, someone asked me, who's, who's I? 
so who are your influencer best friends? Yeah, yeah. Then I told her, I was like, oh, I don't think I have any. Um, not really. Then maybe the next day, she reminded me that, hey, actually, these girls are your friends and they're influencers as well. Mm. But it just doesn't click in my head that these are my influencer friends. They're just friends. They're just friends. Like, yeah. she's my good friend, you know? I wouldn't say like, oh, Amanda is my influencer yeah. friend. This one is my school friend. Yeah, yeah, the other yeah, one's correct. My- yeah. I don't know, work friend. Mm-mm. To me, if you're my friend, you are just going to be my friend for life, mm. you know? And it doesn't matter whether you are famous or not, you have how many followers, you, you are just my friend. Mm. So even if my friend from abroad has like, let's say a million followers, at the end of the day, I was taught from the start of my work in this industry to always see yourself as separate from your numbers. Your numbers could really bring in jobs. But at the end of the day, the core of the person that you are should not be defined by Mm. how many followers you have, Mm -hmm. how well you're doing on Instagram, how many popular friends you have. Mm. Like at the end of the day, I saw this quote online by um, a CEO that I followed. It was like, who who cares? Who cares how many famous friends you have? Mm -hmm. What I value is how safe I feel with Mm -hmm. such people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with regards to your question, I would say that if I had to work with a friend in the industry that I'm not comfortable with, I would eventually just stop working with them. Mm, and yeah. just like all other toxic friendships or people that I just feel unsafe with, mm. we will just eventually just drift apart. Yeah. Okay, so what do you value more? So just say in this mm, relationship, mm. right? What do you what would you value more? The the fact that this person is really good at their job, mm. but they're actually quite a shit person. But mm. they, they're... <laughs> Come on. There are a lot of situations like that. I've been in that situation before. But they're really good at their job. Yeah. But like ethically, you just cannot. Yeah. Like morally, you can't. Yeah. No, I'll be Where no. do you stand? You no. cannot, right? I cannot. I also cannot. I cannot. I, I also cannot. cannot. My whole body just freezes I cannot. Up. Correct. Because it goes against everything. Like my body is saying no. Yes. Like rejecting no, it. No, then no, cannot. It's okay. It's okay. You know, if this if is a good work, one. If I have to work with you, no, and, but babe, and, I know so many people who would choose the latter. Oh, never mind lah. If your video yeah. production is not as good, it's fine. Mm. Just say that it's casual. Mm. You know, yeah. but I'm that kind of person that because if I'm not feeling good, I won't perform well. Correct. I would be awkward. And you I'll cannot sit with yourself. You can't sleep at night. You yes. can't, you know, there's so many uneasiness. And you can't be proud it. of what you created. You know? Because I I tell you, it's such a magical feeling okay. when you work with a team. And then you are so proud of what you created and you love the people on the set as well. Okay. For example, they say Jen. Okay. Yes. Let me make it more real for okay. you. Jen. Yes. Okay. Jen is her assistant yeah. for for uh context. Yeah. We love Jen, okay? Yes, we love so Jen. So we're not here to shit talk Jen. Sorry, yeah. Jen. But just say Jen uh-huh. is so good at her job. Okay. She's amazing. Yes. But she's a shit person. A bit hard mm. because Jen is an exactly. amazing person. Ah. No, no, no. But oh, take, take away, okay. take away the, the Jen is an amazing person. Okay. Pretend she's not. Yes. <laughs> okay. What would you do? Uh, trying. Hang on. What would I do? Yeah. No, but she really, wow, she managed you until like, wow, your job very good. If anything, she elevated it. Okay, but it boils down to your values, how you feel. And there's this one thing that is a threat, but also a good thing in society nowadays. They always say that everyone is replaceable. You know? I mean, though it is, a, it's a very hard pill to swallow. It's so hard. Everybody is replaceable. Mm. Yes, maybe not in the same way, but functionally, everybody can do the same thing things probably not as well but they can learn mm. yeah. um if somebody doesn't look as good they can beautify themselves in whatever way possible you know mm. if you feel like this person speaks better but the attitude is shit then learn find somebody who's willing to learn put in the work in a few months they'll be on par mm. so everyone is replaceable mm. but what you cannot replace is how well you work together how you feel as a team yes and how safe you feel because when you feel good, you perform better. Yeah. And when there's synergy, everything just does so much better. And mm. at the end of the day, when you see the product, you'll be so proud. Yeah. And that is something that I feel is super empowering. And it's very important for me. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, I love that. I'm so proud of you. Because <laughs> I honestly would know a lot of people who would pick the letter. Mm. Mm. 
Because it helps with their career. It helps with them getting ahead. And maybe... I mean, we're not going to judge yeah, that. Yeah, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. That's what makes the world go around, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was just an honest question. Yeah, but I mean, the people who picked the letter probably are really happy with their choice. You know what I mean? At the end of the day... I don't think so. Maybe they're... I, I try to think that they are happy with that choice because it's what they want. Our values might be different, yeah, but it yeah, might be what they yeah, want. You know true. what I mean? That's true. Yeah. And I mean, that's how I think about it. So, But honestly, this piece. is why we're friends. Like, like when it really yeah. comes down to it, value, in terms of values, it's like this. Mm. Mm. Cannot lah. If you vibe wrong, really cannot. Yeah. I'll go home and cry, dude. Yeah. I'm that kind that like, if, if I cannot, I cannot. After like, if we vibe wrongly, I'll just feel so shitty. I'll go home or like, my husband will pick me. And in the car, I'll just like, ah, I'll just break down. Mm. And that is my body telling me that no, this is not, not, it's right. not right. It's not right for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when I said at 25, 26 was the turning point where I really took charge with regards to like the friends I wanted to keep in my life? I had to cut out a group of friends that really meant so much to me. They were a big part of my early 20s. And, you know, I think I hear this story a lot of times. Where there's a lot of like group chats, right? When you have with your girlfriends and like your group of friends. And then there's like, there are separate group chats that they have within the other groups. I mean, like a smaller group. So let's say if your group has like 13 people, like 10. Then they have like smaller group chats of like three, mm-hmm. three or four. Mm-hmm. I, you hear the story so much because I think they want to have that, their internal conversations and things like that. Number one, it's important not to feel isolated. Though it's very obviously that you are like, out not as close or just like ousted kind of thing and you don't know why so it happened to me um so my group of friends planned a whole trip without me and then what they did was accidentally send the message to the main group chat Mm. and then they're like hey i was like oh so we are going then they're like yeah 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 we are all booked if you want you can come too so that was the point where I sat down and I asked myself, do I want to keep this group of friends, you know? Um, and what I should do? Because, yeah, I could have gone along. Will I feel great? Probably mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. Um, do I want to spend my time with other people, other friends, my childhood friends? Yeah, I would want to. And would I want to work more on like my career and all? And decide how I really want to spend my time instead of being away for like seven, eight days. Mm. With a group of people that I treat you sa- that way. Yeah, yeah, I don't feel safe with. Yeah. And I just decided, instead of like replying, I exited the group chat. You know? Um, that's just me running away, honestly, and just like retreating and just disappearing. Mm. But How many times have you exited a group chat? Once. Oh. Mm, that one time. I know people who like rage quit group chats. Oh, Right? Yeah, there, I don't there have friends are a anymore. lot of people. Then after no, they like, they don't, add me back? They don't even say I don't want to be friends anymore. Oh. Like they just exit and then they like marajuk, you know, like throw a fit a bit. And then will they be added back after? Sometimes. Sometimes they will ask to be added. Oh. <laughs> this time this time I just I just quit and I think that was just the end of like the the whole friendship. Mm. Uh I was struggling with it for a long time. I kept asking. But myself, at this point like, in your life that you have like you know, your group of friends now that, that, that you hang out with so often, like the girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Okay, so of at course. least you could still find comfort in those girls. Yeah, I mean, I have my core group of friends mm. from when I was a kid, mm. you know. And up till now, I have like really strong group of friends. Mm. Whether it is like individual friends or like... My friends always joke that they all know each other and they can all hang out because... Yeah, they actually, are all that close. Yeah, it's really easy. Like, yeah. you know, during her wedding and the celebrations that led up to it and after that, we will all just hang out. It's like very easy. It's like I know mm. them because Belle talks about them so much, right? Mm. Yeah. So they always just joke about how they feel like they know each other already. Yeah. Though it's their, their meeting for the first time. Yeah. And they can all click. Yeah. So they'll plan like going to spa together, do this together, <laughs> go breakfast together. And I'm like, what about me? And then they're like, oh, there's three different things. Which one you want to join? Yeah. You know? And it's yeah. so nice that everybody is close and everybody vibes the same. Yeah. And that is, I think my wedding was the best. I would say like- it Coming just, off. Yeah. It your just, group. Your, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And seeing Your people. Your people. Together. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just so beautiful and so yeah. heartwarming. Yeah. And all these people are people that you love and love you back. 
Mm. So for a good few years after I exited that group chat, I felt really bad about myself. Mm. What could I have done? You know, am I a shitty friend? Things like that. Yes, I could have been a shitty friend, you know, and there are things that I need to improve on. But did I do that for my mental well-being? And was that a right choice for me? I would say yes. Definitely because I was able to give my time to the people I wanted to give time to mm. who loved me back, who I felt safe with. Mm. And I think now looking back, I felt really proud of myself. Mm. Though for those few years, I did feel really sad, especially, you know, when you see them still hanging out and you're just not there anymore, mm. you know? And it's a bit hard not to feel like, what have you done wrong? Mm. But now I'm like, no, I, I'm, I'm very happy. Yeah, you have made peace with it, mm. you know? Yeah. Mm. That's nice. Yeah. That's very nice. Um, for me, I mean, I, I think most until recently, I had a relationship slash friendship. It was a bit more work related, but obviously the longer we worked together, you know, we got to know each other better. And I really saw this person as my friend after a while. But um, there were a lot of things that she did that I thought that I had to kind of close one eye uh, because, you know, I just felt, in a lot of ways, I felt very bad for her. You know, she would kind of dump on me. Um, like trauma dump? Trauma dump on me. And it actually, now in hindsight, it crossed so many <laughs> boundaries. But I thought, no, I, like, I, I feel really bad for her. You know, she doesn't seem like she has a lot of people in her life. And she's just consumed with work. And she spends so much time helping me with my with my career and you know it was part of her job but she was very very good at it um but after a while it got very very draining mm. and um the last straw for me was when she started projecting you mm. know yeah she started projecting and this now in hindsight i realized that she's actually a very insecure person so i'm mm. not even like angry about it i'm just kind of like okay now that i know what kind of person you are i wouldn't um be close to you i wouldn't want to get close to you but if you're there i would be cordial to you and that's about it mm. yeah i mean that that is how i treat my toxic friendships there is no need to like outcast somebody or like go around and spreading drama mm. and like mm -hmm. toxicity because this is exactly why i don't like you and yes. i wouldn't want to do that to you like I don't have time for this, yeah. you know? And uh, yeah, you know, I, just, I just hope that whatever it is that she's going through, but the things that she seeks and the things that I seek are very, very different. Mm. Um, I, our values do not align. And maybe that is why at the core, we were, we were never meant to be friends mm -hmm. to begin with. But because of the proximity, I really softened up to her. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I could be someone for her, but she really took that kindness for weakness lah. Mm. Of course, it hurt me for a while. But uh, nah, I've been through worse shit. So this is really like, okay, girl, <laughs> you do you. <laughs> yeah. So that's how, that's how I can walk away. Because, you know, really, I know it's not me lah. Mm. Okay. Okay, so let's... Go, let's get into our next segment. We are going to do our messy mail. Are you guys ready? Whoa. 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 Okay, 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 okay. Whoa. Okay, you want to do it? Oh, I think this one, is it, this is a long one. I think, okay, I'll start. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Dear Amanda and Christabel, Here's the story of me and my two, two boyfriends. Kinda. Yeah, and she put a smiley face there. Wow, we need a one. <laughs> I think we're in for a ride. Ooh. Okay. All these names are made up and here is the mess. It started when I, 19 female at the time, started my second year of uni in the UK and just got out of a relationship where I was cheated on. Naturally, I wanted some attention. I ended up on Hinge and Tinder and started getting close, but non-exclusive with four guys. Our friend has been busy. Let's, Let's call, them. call them Chris, Leo, Kevin, and Lucas. <laughs> so I'm talking and hanging out with them for about a month when Halloween rolls along. 
Me and my homegirls go out with our little cute fits and tell me why I see Chris, Kevin, Lucas all together outside the club. Because God has a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> so before I could run, can I just say, hang on. You write very well. I feel like I'm reading a story. They spotted me first calling out to me at the same time. The looks on their faces when they all realized they knew me would have been picture worthy. I think the, the faces will be something like that. <laughs> if it wasn't for the fact that they were all seeing me in a scandalous Halloween costume. <laughs> you need to read this, Ming. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I tell you that I hadn't done anything 18 plus with any of them. Well, maybe 15 plus with Chris. Sorry, it needs, I need a while to process this. Okay, do you want me to like yes, yes, explain yes, it yes, to you? Okay. Okay, so anything 18 plus with any of them, it's the, you uh, know. Okay. Then and then the plus 15 plus is the, plus is the yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe okay, like okay, getting okay. handsy. Yeah, yeah. Like, but it's not going like full. No, so no, it's not full him. on. Mm. Don't worry, we'll bleep anything that's inappropriate. Maybe like, oh. so you know, like there's like first base, second yes. base, maybe second base. So that means 18 plus is sex. And then like yeah. uh, yes. 15 plus is no like, sex. Yeah, like maybe hands. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so this was not the image I wanted to have them off me. Okay. It turns out they used to live together in first year. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Uh. When we get in the club, me and Chris end up getting closer and as he's caging me in, when we go out for some air, guess who calls out, Chris, is that you? It was Leo, the fourth guy I was talking to. I almost screamed. Okay. <gasps> Obviously, both guys are now kind of pissed so I explained everything that happened. I mean, who would have thought, right? I honestly didn't mean for this to happen and that we could stop. But like something out of a terribly written Wattpad, Leo goes, don't apologize. It was a misunderstanding and I want to keep seeing you. My jaw dropped and to my shock, Chris said, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry. And I short circuited at that point. <laughs> what? <laughs> Struggling to process what the hell was going on and having my main character moment, I say, I'm not... I can't be exclusive to one of you. I'm not going to choose. Leo looked me in the eye and said, no, but you can be exclusive to the both of us. Like what? I asked if this was an open relationship where they'd be seeing other people then, but they said no. So tell me if I'm wrong, but the conclusion that I came to is that I'll essentially have two boyfriends who aren't my boyfriends. But to wrap it all up, no, we are all not together anymore. But yes, I'm still in contact with them. I'm a changed woman now, but I would still do it again. Yes, bye. So, girl, wait, 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 I got a question, I got a question, I got a question. She just wants to tell us a story. Thank you for sharing. What that was really to, entertaining. What happened to Kevin and Lucas? Yeah, Did say that yeah why, are, are, okay? why are they left out? Yeah, I, like, I feel like I come with more questions than answers yeah, for you now. Like for the first time, <laughs> I feel like I'm so invested in the story. Yeah. But you only told me about yeah. Leo and Chris. Now I can remember their names. Oh God. <laughs> Please tell me more. So Leo and Chris are okay with dating you. But what about Kevin and Lucas? Yeah. Were they okay with just like keeping it up as well? Yeah. Wow. I'm And oh, wow. so where is the other guy? Chris, Leo, Chris, Kevin. Chris, Leo, Kevin, Lucas. For. Oh. I'm okay, fun. but it's it's I would say that this is definitely one of our messiest males. <laughs> you know? Um maybe I'm like up till now the most. Yes. 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 I don't think you're seeking any advice, but yeah. more of like just sharing about your mess and I I, I wanted to thank you. I for can relate. I mean, I've never been in a situation with four guys yeah. as like a contender. No, no, no. Never. Just three. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say, though, the last part, you would do it again. I mean, you're young mm -hmm. and you're not dating them. It's not exclusive. But she calls yeah, them boyfriends. You know you. Uh, but she did say that they weren't exclusive. Yeah. yeah. But aren't boyfriends see? supposed to be exclusive? Non-exclusive with four guys. So she was really just having fun. I mean, if That's guys true. can do it, guys do it all the time. Why can't girls do it? 
That's true. Yeah. I, I like the story. I think like you do you, you know, but just know your boundaries. Mm-hmm. Be safe. But yeah. Sounds like you're enjoying life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, from the way of um, how you wrote it, looks like it's fun. Yeah. Like, yes, bye. Nah, I cannot. I'm an overthinker. I tell you, my thoughts will consume me. Way, like when I was dating, I don't think I would have done it. But now in hindsight, yes, I would. Yeah. But you know, draw my boundaries, you know. It's like, you know. It's just getting you- to know people. And then after that, you decide which one you want. Yeah. It's like ordering four main dishes and deciding on one to reorder the next time. Or maybe sometimes you don't want to order. So you can just have the dishes there. Um, (laughs) Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you guys had fun, had a a good time listening in. Um, It's been fun. If you're watching on the Takeaway Table on YouTube, leave us a comment. Let us know about anything that you want to hear us talk about in the next few episodes. Mm -hmm. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, How you can even relate to us. You know, whatever like resonates with you. We would love to hear that. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't forget to follow us on our socials at MommyPod. And that's M-A-W-M-I. M-A-W-M-I. Okay, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Bye.